My senior season here in New Mexico was so much has happened in such a short period of time. Let me give you the rundown on some of these changes. A few new guys up front, the offensive line, a lot of the big guys that were here previously, they not here no more. Comes to my receivers, Andrew is gone. He went on into the draft. My boy is going to do bigger and better things, but my boy Lincoln is still here making crazy plays. Here we got guys like Dan Guerrero as a starting receiver, which is crazy to me. But this year, either Lincoln is going to have the best year for receiver ever in college football or a lot of these new guys are going to step up and emerge into their role. But with a revamped offensive line and a bunch of weapons around me as a team, we're aiming for perfection this season. But we get the win over Toledo, our first game of the season at home, and I'm already putting up nasty numbers. Wyoming is 0-2, but we cannot sleep on these boys. The past three seasons, every time we played them, they put up a fight. One thing I learned to love last season about Lincoln, his ability to be on the same page with me when it comes to extending plays, and nothing's changed this season. Bro, let me find out Dan Guerrero is going to be one of my top targets this season. He's been making some plays lately. I know we're only a game in, but throughout practices and camps and just over the summer, he's been showing now, stepping up, and just really putting on the show. Four years here in New Mexico, and Bobby just hasn't develop into that true number one receiver I thought he would be, but nonetheless, he is a pure playmaker. And I can't forget about my stellar tight end, Caleb Mara, man, for a big guy, bro, he be moving. Down one point, we marched all the way up the field, five seconds left on the clock, and our kicker drills it home. Under 300 yards in the air, but 100 yards exactly on the ground. We needed every bit of it. Wyoming comes to play every single time. It never fails. I can't lie, I've been seeing a different dog when it comes to Bobby. It's his senior season, and he he wants to get picked up in that draft. And I already know when that time comes for my boy Caleb to get up out of here, he's definitely getting drafted. He has elite feet for a tight end. And a player everybody's been sleeping on, including the coaches, is my boy Dan, bro. I'm telling you, he's a sleeper, but bro, he is going to go crazy this season. Notice over the past three to four seasons, it's always the fourth to fifth man on the depth chart who just explodes on the scene and just takes over to be the guy. I got my eyes on Caleb the entire play. I put this ball exactly where it needs to be so he can turn it up, get into the end zone but he still steps out but with us being within a yard of the touchdown y'all know that read option never fails let me get that what did i tell you about dan guerrero a real deal playmaker stop playing with his name I predicted Dan early on to be one of my top targets this season, even though he's like fourth or fifth on the depth chart, but look at him, just making plays. This man has exploded on the scene, making crazy plays. Is it safe to say that Dan is my number one over Lincoln? Going into the fourth quarter, up 20, we completely put this game to bed, adding another six points to that lead, let's go. And with that throw to Phillip Skinner, I break the all-time NCAA record for the most passing touchdowns in a career. We got UNC on the road this week, and if we win this game, there's no way we're not ranked by next week. We run the read option so much, I had to switch it up here in the red zone. I know they were expecting it because we literally run it every time we're in the red zone, but I took this one in myself. Dan is either open or in a position to just make a play. He always fighting for extra yards, just putting in work, just going crazy on the field. Haven't heard much from my boy Jordan Porter in a couple of games, but I find him in the end zone wide open. This safety in this corner really tried to end my boy career, though. But our defense stepped up big time in this game. They went crazy and shut UNC down completely. Our first offensive possession, I hit Caleb right over the top, put this ball in a bucket, and he takes off towards the end zone, gets tackled, but he picks up six. Second and seven, I put all my trust in my offensive line, hanging back extremely patient just to find like the sixth receiver on the depth chart, Phillip Skinner. Down here in the red zone, trying to extend our lead, we run that read option to perfection like always, and I even hit him with a little leap into the end zone. It's just too easy. We went from having a 21 point lead to only a seven point lead right before the second half but that's no problem for my offense we're gonna get into that end zone and execute every time there's no question that our offense can produce at a high level against any defense in the country but our defense in their inconsistency it kind of worries me a little bit like last week our defense only allowed 14 points from a ranked unc team on the road but then we give up 14 in the first half to an air force team and can we take a moment to give jordan porter and bobby wooten some love they went off this game after being some what non-existent these last couple of weeks and if you want to talk about efficient numbers 16 of 22 481 yards five in the air one on the ground we went berserk 
We got San Jose State this week at the crib, and I make my first play to Philip Skinner. I don't know what it is, but his last name is just creepy to me. My boy Jordan Porter said he been gone, but not for long. I found my boy in the back of the end zone for a huge 42-yard touchdown. We have no running game whatsoever, so my running back gets no love at all. But I find him wide open on this route upfield, and he takes this one in for a huge touchdown. You know it won't be a big play day if Dan don't make it into the mix. That boy is always open. He he is truly my number one receiver. I didn't think he would outshine Lincoln, but he has. Lincoln has been dealing with an ankle injury, so he hasn't been on the field nowhere nearly as much as he should. That really opened the door for Dan as well, but he'll be back soon. Lincoln feels like that his spot is going to get taken or he's going to be overshadowed by the other receivers when he makes his return. I'm trying to get Lincoln to understand that no matter when he comes back, he's going to touch the ball. Even the fourth and fifth guy on the depth chart makes plays and gets touchdowns or whatever the case may be. But we remain undefeated after getting his win at home against San Jose state i put up crazy numbers a day and of course i'm player of the game the offense produced at an extremely high level 49 points but somehow our defense gives up 28 points to san jose state at home like none of these teams we play are just absolute garbage but we are far more superior we've made so many adjustments so many additions to the defense how are they not playing at an elite level but offensively we've just been cooking bro even though the last couple of years i've lost my number one receiver multiple times it doesn't stop us from producing like my first season here in new mexico elijah queen was my number one receiver but coming in my sophomore year he was going to the nfl my sophomore year and my junior season andrew emerged and he became the guy and pretty much broke every record in new mexico school history. So I come into my senior year, I don't have Andrew, but I'm like, okay, I got Lincoln, my number one receiver. Nope, he's out with an injury. Seems like I lose my number one receiver after every single season. It always feels good to have guys like Jordan Porter and Bobby Wooten on the team who've been here for the last three to four seasons. And with how well I've developed my speed and overall mobility as a quarterback, that's a whole nother weapon in itself. So from the offensive line to a lot of my weapons and losing my number ones after every single season, what is my defense's excuse? We went to close one on the road here against Hawaii. This is maybe the second time, maybe the first time we've ever played them at their home field. Not my most efficient game, but over 400 yards passing, six total touchdowns, and we needed every bit of it because Hawaii came to play today. We're pretty much halfway through the season. We're ranked number 14 in the nation. A lot has to fall into our favor in order for us to get to that top three, top five. You cannot tell me that I am not league ready. The adjustments I make for my offensive line, my receivers, setting up the big play is insane. I love what I've built here in the last couple of years that New Mexico completely revamping and changing the culture of this school, this team, but I can't help but think about the league. But with so much on the line this season, I have to have tunnel vision and focus on the task at hand. Jordan Porter completely destroyed this corner of the line. I find him wide open over the top. He walks in for a touchdown. We take a crazy 21-0 lead just in the first quarter. I'm not saying Jordan is my number one or my number two receiver by no stretch of the imagination, but it always seems like when one player makes a play, the other makes a bigger play like taking a look back to last season andrew and lincoln went back and forth tick for tack play for play all season long i just love how all of my playmakers just piggyback off of each other's success and just their energy and their big plays i've never seen nothing like it even though nevada isn't the greatest team we played this season our defense stepped up big holding them to only 10 all the way up into the fourth quarter always a great sign when we play a complete game as a team on the offensive and defensive side of the ball this week against utah State, we're ranked number 11 in the nation, and finishing this season perfect is critical. With us being one of the very few teams left in the nation undefeated, I thought we would climb the ranks a lot faster, but we're making progress nonetheless. But honestly, I learned my lesson looking too far ahead. I need to focus on everything one game at a time. And though I have to mention this week, Benji Johnson is having a game of his life. It's always the guy who's not the guy to step up and make all the big plays out of nowhere. And Benji just continues to absolutely cook, fry this Utah state defense their secondary cannot hold this man he is playing out of his mind today a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders seeing all the other receivers step up while my number one weapon is down with an injury it's a beautiful thing to see once again pure offensive dominance we get the blowout win over utah state handing them boys their first conference l of the season one of if not the most efficient game i've ever had in my career 20 for 28 417 and six of them things i went berserk how many times have you heard me say the name bruce horn you probably haven't at all this entire season because i barely know who he is but he just made a huge huge play. 
when scouts go to evaluate my dual threat ability, bro, they're going to pull up this play right here, making a filthy move in space, breaking a tackle, fight for extra yards. Come on. And as valuable as tight ends are in the league today, bro, having a guy like Caleb Mara is going to be insane for any NFL quarterback. It would be crazy if we landed on the same team in the league. And it's sad that a guy like Benji Johnson is starting to develop into a true number two receiver. Too bad I won't be here his next season. Me, the offense, defense, the ball boy, the coaches, nobody expected UVA to come out swinging like this. They're putting on a show right now. There's no doubt in my mind I can lead a miraculous comeback and win this game on the road, but my defense, they're struggling big time today. An undefeated season and a shot at a national championship is within sights for this team. I refuse to fall short of our ultimate goal. I'm putting it all on the line. Down four points under a minute left here in the fourth quarter. Out of all people, who do I find? The seventh man on the depth chart, Bruce Horn. Not only does he make a huge play putting us in great field position to go down and score, but he actually scores the game-winning touchdown. Shout out to Bruce, bro. And just like that, we execute the miraculous comeback against UVA on the road. My guy stepped up big time and if we're talking about versatility 435 through the air 164 on the ground six total touchdowns talk to me nice we jump and become the number two ranked team in the nation with two games left in the regular season and we got 9-1 Boise State this week I know this QB run is about to take the entire defense the entire stadium by surprise and then putting the move on the only guy that had a chance come on it's nothing new when Dan is making plays or just wide open he is truly taking over as my number one with Lincoln being out for the first time in a long time i actually roll out to my left with a bunch of space out here i find bobby wooden up the field wide open making a huge play i've come to the realization that bobby was never really meant to be the guy he makes a big play here a big play there but he just isn't a go-to receiver for two straight years i thought he would become the guy take over as the number one of this team put up crazy numbers and skyrocket his draft stock i mean sometimes he does flash number one receiver capability but that's just it it's inconsistent this game he is going off but next game he could be non-existent another big game and another week without my number one receiver when Lincoln returns we can actually see our offense at its full potential for the first time in a long time it's week 11 and guess who's back my dog my number one Mr. Lincoln Victor my boy set up the big play that put us in great field position up here in the front lines running that read option to perfection as always seeing Lincoln back on the field is a beautiful sight my boy took his time through his recovery process and he can now get back and help this team reach our ultimate goal I knew it wouldn't be long before my boy stepped up and made a huge play breaking multiple tackles taking off fighting his way into the end zone bro he's back and there's no better way to break the ncaa all-time passing yards record than off a crazy amazing play like that one and you would think with my number one being back on the field dan would take a back seat and disappear nope he's still out here making plays doing what he do and when I say Dan is out here all gas, no brakes, I think he wants Lincoln to take the back seat while he takes over the reins as the number one receiver. He's putting up a fight for it. And Bobby Wooden said he's not going absent on me this week. He's going to show up and make a big play. A great route from my boy right here for the touchdown. First and 10, I'm going to be honest, I'm staring Phil down this entire play. And just as I got hit, I find him wide open in the end zone for a 42-yard bomb. Nobody on this team, nobody in the country knew how good of a deep threat that Phillip Skinner is we all know now if i'm being honest i thought lincoln's return would put a hiccup in our momentum but it just seemed to elevate the entire team on the offensive and defensive side of the ball everyone's playmaking ability was on full display today and that allowed me to have one of the best games for a quarterback in ncaa history the last time we played them they were six and two and somehow they made it to the conference championship at six and six they lost every game after that but nonetheless this is a really good nevada team and we can't sleep on anybody we learned that earlier this season all i got to say is UVA. Remember when I said Bobby would explode for a huge play here and there? Well, this was one of those times, bro. He's breaking tackles, picking up 44 yards on the play. This route combination on the right side of the field worked out to perfection. I found my boy Lincoln for the quick strike touchdown. He make it three consecutive games where Bobby Wooten has caught at least one touchdown, bro. He is finishing this season out strong. I know I've been talking about my boy a lot, but I just love to see him succeed. And even with all the time he's missed, the connection I have with Lincoln when it comes to extending plays is very much 
is still there. Having said Jordan Porter's name in a little minute, but my boy showed up for me here making a big play to extend our lead, but he slowly slipped to the number three, if not fourth receiver. Don't ask me why, don't question me on it, but I'm taking off to my right, getting into the end zone. I leap in and get absolutely whacked midair. Make it four consecutive years, we reign king over the Mountain West Conference, and our coach gets to put hands on that trophy once again. And for the second time in just my four-year career here in New Mexico, I am the Heisman Trophy winner winner. Taking a look at my stats for the year, over 5,000 passing yards, 56 total touchdowns, hands down my best season here at New Mexico. As much as I talked about Bobby not being the guy this entire season, he was the only player to crack 1,000 receiving yards. He had a really solid season, and statistically, he was my number one receiver. It took us four years, but we finally did it. We've reached a national championship game, and it's against an undefeated Michigan team. And I'm not going to lie, this Michigan secondary is elite, the best we've played played really my entire career here thus far so i gotta use my legs a lot today and just like that already here in the first half we're facing a lot of adversity we need to get into the end zone now and it doesn't matter who we play if we're within five yards of that end zone that read option is going to be ran to perfection defense got to stop and got us some amazing field position and i don't got to say nothing more nothing less read option read option read option just over 20 seconds left before we go into the fourth quarter and Lincoln strikes. He takes off untouched into the end zone to give us the lead. It's been tick for tack all game. We scored, they scored, easily the most intense game I've ever played in my life, but offensively, we're up for the challenge. Just over two and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter, and I take off for the biggest run of my life. I go untouched into the end zone 65 yards. We complete the perfect season. We beat number one Michigan in the national championship game. I've dedicated four years of my life for myself, my coach, my teammates to celebrate winning the biggest game in college football. Probably the most statistically balanced game of my entire career, but now that this is out of the way, it's time for me to lock in and prepare for the NFL draft. 